My name's Graham Spence. I'm a grinder with Ineos Team UK. I'm currently on the seventh story of a hotel in Auckland, halfway through my isolation. So I'm nearly halfway through my quarantine period before I'll be let out into the streets of Auckland. I'm the first of sort of six people from, from our team. So we're just starting now. Other teams have been through, so I think they've kind of got a bit of an idea of what uh, the Relocating America's Cup teams need. We've been discussing the isolation period for a while with our human performance team. Um, it's been hard to plan for because obviously this, you know, I mentioned that the ho we knew which hotel we were going to. Uh, the hotel gives you, provides you with three meals a day. So it's probably a little bit light on calories for for what we're used to eating. But then our training might be down a little bit because we're, we're in here. Um, but we're able to supplement our meals. So I'm generally doing the three meals that the hotel provides me with. And then I'll skip one of the hotel meals and order a, a Uber Eats takeout to be delivered to the, to the hotel. And then I'll keep one of the other hotel mo meals in the fridge. So then I can kind of supplement it to a five, five meal or even a six meal day if I want to. So nutrition wise, I'm pretty happy. Flew with the normal, my normal supplement regime. Um, so that hasn't really changed. And I kind of expect that because I'm able to train whilst I'm here, you can see the, the grinding machine I've got in the, in the background, I will should be able to up my hours definitely of training and certainly of sleep. So I think health and wellness wise, you know, take care of the mental side of things. And I think that I should be in a better situation when I leave quarantine than when I entered it. It's, it's just different. I mean, I'm basically just in a, in a bedroom and it's hard, harder to keep that routine. It's not like walking in the gym at 7.30 in the morning and we've got a couple of trainers who are there to, you know, help put us in that right space to train, you know, help us with the stretches and with the prehab that we're doing and obviously with the strength and conditioning that we're doing as well. I've been, you know, even when I signed with Ineos, I was still based in, in Perth in Western Australia for the first six months of my contract whilst I was part-time. So I'd have two weeks in Perth and then two weeks in the UK. So it was really at that stage pretty important that I had a grinding machine at home. And even when I was with Oracle, I'd experimented with building a few sort of custom grinding machines for what we were doing there in that team. And then I kind of followed it on after the cup. So I had, had one at home that I built and then this is the... This is the third version, and this was I built this when I was in isolation in Perth, when we have to when we had to leave Cagliari in Italy. So I built this one as a plan that I'd be able to travel with it, and it's been it's been pretty useful actually. I've you know so I was, had to do an isolation period in Perth. I've also done an isolation period in the UK, and now I'm doing an isolation period in um in New Zealand. So I've had this machine, and I've flown with it the whole time. Fits in my suitcases. Um, I basically just fly with the grinding machine. I haven't got enough luggage allowance to take anything else. But uh, see, I've got I've got one clean t-shirt still. So just trying to run a bit of a more minimalist life. You don't need a lot of clothes when you're in a hotel for two weeks. I feel far more connected to the team if I can call into a meeting. And even if it's not an important meeting for me to talk in, it's it's nice just to listen that, you know, things are still moving moving forwards and the whole campaign hasn't stopped for two weeks just because I'm stuck in a hotel. So um, we run one or two sailing team meetings a week where we touch base on our individual areas and just sort of update other people and also kind of come up with areas that we think a week or need some work on so we're still doing that we've got one of them tonight i think that's uh oh, sorry one of them tomorrow at 10 o'clock at night i think um and then there's a few other uh systems-based meetings that i'll call into they're around 1 2 a.m in the morning so i pretty much try and get a little nap after lunch for a couple of hours and then i can stay up till sort of two in the morning and then sleep through till eight or nine in the morning so just trying to split the time zone a little bit so that i can still attend that and still feel that i'm connected to the team which is really important to me the second boat is 
um, I guess hard, hardware wise, it's it's locked in, and we've you know we've certainly got what we've got for the first iteration and what will be launched, and um, certainly all the teams will have to be at that stage now, you know. Um, but then there are still things that can evolve to a degree. Obviously, people are responsible for building this equipment, and you always have a a big give and take because we'd like to continue to refine, particularly the the software and the coding things, which you know, they're, they're not physical entities and until, you know, once someone's written it down, it can be, you know, deleted and, and adjusted. However, we need to be sympathetic that at some point they need to freeze that and we need to just build or code what we've said we wanted. So we're probably nearing the end of being able to, to easily adjust the software side of things. So we need to be realistic as well. You know, at some point, having something that works that might have a few areas of improvement required is going to be more useful than shooting for perfection and putting something in the water for a race period that doesn't quite work yet. So that's definitely the challenge that all the teams are going to be uh, up against and it's hard to come up with the right balance there. I've been able to try most of the grinding cockpits um but i've been spending most of my time sailing either in the in the furthest forward cockpit on the starboard side or the middle cockpit on the starboard side the uh the aft cockpit's the most fun though because you can really see where you're going and you got a much much better connection with the with the yacht but chris brittle's kind of made that home and he doesn't really like sharing so i'll be grinding off on the other side, sorry, of the handles with the with the jib trimmer. So, but my only involvement in that is really helping them turn the handles to to power it. So the actual, you know, the the trimming functions are really limited to to the the one primary jib trimmer, and then obviously the the main trimmer trims the main, and then the grinders are really just just supporting that with gear selection. And turning the handles really, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty simple. Like, I'd love to. I'd love to talk it up and say, and say, you know, how amazingly complicated my role is. But once we push the boat off the dock, you know, the cockpits are pretty simple. All the work goes into designing it to work like that. Not sure how it works for the for the other teams, but I expect that they're in a similar situation where anything you you can do to simplify how many tasks each grinder needs to do is only going to make the boat go better. I don't know that I don't know that I talk this my bell. I'm gonna can I stop this for a sec? Because that's the nurse to take my temperature. So I need to go, I need to go do that. Otherwise I'll call the police. Can I just leave it rolling and I'll go see her and come straight back to you? Okay. Hello. Hi, how are you? Morning. Are you on a phone call? Uh yeah, that's okay though. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Completely well? Yes. No cold or flu symptoms? No, nothing. Temperature's normal. What's your, what are you up to today? A little bit of work, a little bit of training. Yeah. That's it. Maybe get a nap in the afternoon. You silly not to, hey? Yeah, why not? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> are you coping okay? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's just awesome. like my teenage years all over again. I Locked know. in my bedroom. Teenagers love it. Yeah. They just, they're perfect. No one time them. They have to go to bed early, they sleep late, watch yeah. what they want. <laughs> Catch you tomorrow. Great. Yeah, thank you. See ya. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Temperature was normal, so they like to have a little bit of a chat. Obviously, the mental health is pretty important in these kind of facilities. You know, at, at the moment, the challenge for the grinders probably is keeping up with the guys who do get the time in the simulator. Our roles are much simpler on the boat, but we need to evolve at the same pace that they can. And often we'll go sailing and then they might get 20, 20 hours in a simulator before we go sailing for the next time. And if the grinders haven't kept up to date with what they've changed and how it might have small changes over to what the grinders are doing, then we'll end up being the uh, the weak link on a sailing day, which we don't want to we don't want to be. So we you know we debrief the sim sessions, which is interesting. Rather than watching videos on the TV, we'll get together and we'll watch a couple of you know computer renders of boats sail around against each other. But 
it's yeah, it's hugely important. And I think that's probably a massive benefit of the sim. By the time we go sailing, the you know the most important people to the manoeuvres, your, your helmsman, your, your tactician and your trimmers, they've done the manoeuvre hundreds of times in the simulator. So they're consistent in what they say and in how they interact with each other. So when we do go sailing, it's very easy for the grinders to fit in and to apply you know, the few parts of the manoeuvre that we're in charge of because the guys at the back of the boat are so consistent. So whilst the grinders aren't involved in the simulator that much, it definitely has a massive flow on to the effectiveness of the sailing days, the fact that we get on the water and everyone knows what we're doing already. I think the in-awe moments come when you're in the chase boat watching it sail. When you're, when you're on board, you're really dialed into you know, what your display is saying and turning the handles. Um, but when you're in the chase boat, watching the, watching the boat sail around it, it's just impressive. And I think, you know, all, all the teams should be proud of what they've created and getting a, getting stable flight out of something this big and this heavy, um, hydrofoiling's impressive. Mm -hmm.